The following is a lecture given by His Holiness Jaya Pataka Swami on September 27, 1984 at Marari Savak Farm in Mulberry, Tennessee. The class begins with a lecture from the Srimad Bhagavatam, 1st Canto, Chapter 7, Verse 10. All different varieties of Atmaramas. All different varieties of Atmaramas. Those who take pleasure in Atma. Those who take pleasure in Atma. Or spirit self. Or spirit self. Especially those established. Especially those established. On the path of self-realization. On the path of self-realization. Though freed from all kinds of material bondage. Though freed from all kinds of material bondage. Desire to render unalloyed devotional service. Desire to render unalloyed devotional service. Unto the personality of Godhead. Unto the personality of Godhead. This means that the Lord possesses. This means that the Lord possesses. Transcendental qualities. Transcendental qualities. And therefore can attract everyone. And therefore can attract everyone. Including liberated souls. Including liberated souls. Purport. Lord Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu explained this Atma Rama sloka very vividly before his chief devotee Srila Sanatana Goswami. He points out eleven factors in the sloka, namely one, Atma Rama, two, Munaya, three, Nirgantha, four, Api, five, Cha, six, Urukrama 7 Kurvanti 8 Ahaitukim 9 Bhaktim 10 Itambhutaguna and 11 Hari According to the Viswaprakasha Sanskrit Dictionary there are seven synonyms for the word Atmarama which are as follows Brahman the Absolute Truth Body, mind, endeavor, endurance, intelligence, and personal habits. The word munaya refers to those who are thoughtful, those who are grave and silent. Three, ascetics. Four, the persistent. Five, mendicants. And six, sages. And seven, saints. The word near Grantha conveys these ideas. One, one who is liberated from nations. Two, one who has no connection with scriptural injunction. In other words, who is freed from the obligation of the rules and regulations mentioned in the revealed scriptures like ethics, Vedas, philosophy, psychology, and metaphysics. In other words, the fools, the literate urchins, etc., who have no connection with regulative principles. Three, a capitalist, and also for one who is penniless. According to the Sabdakosha dictionary, the affix ni is used in the sense of one certainty, two counting, three building, and four forbiddance. And the word granta is used in the sense of wealth, thesis, vocabulary, etc. The word urukrama means, quote, the one whose activities are glorious, unquote. Krama means step. This word Uru Krama specifically indicates the Lord incarnation as Vamana, who covered the whole universe by immeasurable steps. Lord Vishnu is powerful and his activities are so glorious that he has created the spiritual world by his internal potency and the material world by his external potency. By his all-pervading features, he is everywhere present as the supreme truth. And in his personal feature he is always present in his transcendental abode of Golok Vrindavana where he displays his transcendental pastimes in all variegatedness his activities cannot be compared to anyone else's and therefore the word Urukrama is just applicable to him only 
according to Sanskrit verbal arrangement. Kurvanti refers to doing things for someone else. Therefore it means that the Atma Ramas render devotional service unto the Lord, not for personal interest but for the pleasure of the Lord, Urukrama. Hetu means causal. There are many causes for one's sense satisfaction and they can be chiefly classified as material enjoyment mystic powers and liberation which are generally desired by progressive persons as far as material enjoyments are concerned they are innumerable and the materialists are eager to increase them more and more because they are under the illusory energy there is no end to the list of material enjoyments nor can anyone in the material universe have all of them as far as mystic powers are concerned there are eight in all such as to become the minutest in form, to become weightless, to have anything one desires, to lord it over the material nature, to control other living beings, to throw earthly globes in outer space, etc. These mystic powers are mentioned in Bhagavatam. The forms of liberation are five in number. Therefore, unalloyed devotion means service to the Lord without desire for the above-mentioned personal benefits. And the powerful personality of Godhead, Sri Krishna, can be satisfied by such unalloyed devotees free from all sorts of desires for personal benefit. Unalloyed devotional service of the Lord progresses in different stages. Practice of devotional service in the material field is of 81 different qualities. And above such activities is the transcendental practice of devotional service, which is one and is called sadhana bhakti when unalloyed practice of sadhana bhakti is matured into transcendental love for the Lord the transcendent loving service of the Lord begins gradually developing into nine progressive stages of loving service under the headings of attachment love affection feelings affinity adherence following ecstasy and intense feelings of separation The attachment of an inactive devotee develops up to the stage of transcendent love of God. Attachment of an active servitor develops up to the stage of adherence. And that for a friendly devotee develops up to the stage of following. And the same is also the case for the paternal devotees. Devotees in conjugal love develop ecstasy up to the stage of intense feelings of separation. These are some of the features of unalloyed devotional service of the Lord. These are the different stages of prema. According to Hari Bhakti Surudhaya, the import of the word Itang Bhuta is complete bliss. Transcendental bliss and the realization of impersonal Brahman becomes comparable to the scanty water contained in a pit made by a cow's hoof. It is nothing compared with the ocean of bliss of the vision of the personality of Godhead. The personal form of the Lord Sri Krishna is so attractive that it comprehends all attraction, all bliss and all tastes, rasas. These attractions are so strong that no one wants to exchange them for material enjoyment, mystic powers and liberation. There is no need of logical arguments in support of this statement. But if out of one's own nature one becomes attracted by the qualities of Lord Sri Krishna, we must know for certain that all the qualities of the Lord have nothing to do with mundane qualities. All of them are full of bliss, knowledge and eternity. There are innumerable qualities of the Lord and one is attracted by one quality while another is attracted by another. Great sages such as the four bachelor devotees, Sanaka, Sanatana, Sonanda, Su, uh, Sananda and Sanat Kumara were attracted by the fragrance of flowers and tulasi leaves anointed with the pulp of sandalwood offered at the lotus feet of the Lord. Similarly, Sukadeva Goswami was attracted by the transcendental pastimes of the Lord. Sukadeva Goswami was already situated in the liberated stage, yet he was attracted by the pastimes of the Lord. 
This proves that the quality of his pastimes has nothing to do with material affinity. Similarly, the young cowherd damsels were attracted by the bodily features of the Lord and Rukmini was attracted by hearing about the glories of the Lord. Lord Krishna attracts even the mind of the goddess of fortune. He attracts in special cases the minds of all young girls. He attracts the minds of elderly ladies by paternal affection. He attracts the mind of the male in the humors of servitude and friendship. The word Hari conveys various meanings, but the chief import of the word is that he, the Lord, vanquishes everything inauspicious and takes away the mind of the devotee by awarding pure transcendental love. By remembering the Lord in acute distress, one can be free from all varieties of miseries and anxieties. Gradually the Lord vanquishes all obstacles on the path of devotional service of a pure devotee and the result of nine devotional activities such as hearing chanting becomes manifest manifested by his personal features and transcendental attributes the Lord attracts all psychological activities of a pure devotee such as the attractive power of Lord Shri Krishna the attraction is so powerful that a pure devotee never hankers for any one of the four principles of religion. These are the attractive features of the transcendental attributes of the Lord. And adding to this the words api and cha, one can increase the imports unlimitedly. According to Sanskrit grammar, there are seven synonyms for the word api. So by interpreting each and every word of this sloka, one can see unlimited numbers of transcendental qualities of Lord Krishna that attract the mind of a pure devotee. Thus end the purport of text 10, chapter 7, canto 1 of the Srimad Bhagavatam. By His Divine Grace, Shri Abhoy Charan Bhakti Vedanta Swami Prabhupada. Sutta Uvacha Atma Ramas Chamunayo Nirganta Apyurukrame Kurvantya Hai Tukim Bhaktim Itang Bhuta Guru Hari. So this verse has been preached on by Lord Chaitanya on different occasions. It's a very important verse because of how Lord Chaitanya has explained it in such detail. Actually, the verses in the Bhagavatam, you can take every verse and take it word by word and you can get so many different purports from each verse. Here, if you take the eleven factors in the sloka and then each factor has somewhere between seven four to seven different uh, meanings then How many different combinations can you get of those? Each one seven. This six is the same. This one chain. This six again chain. You know, like how many total combinations? That's how many basic uh, understandings of the verse could be derived. The Lord Chaitanya he gave sixty four meanings just like that but actually practically speaking you get hundreds of thousands of meanings unlimited meanings because then if you take each of the synonyms then those synonyms you could also find synonyms for them and further break it down <clears throat> the point is that someone who is completely material of course, there's so many points, but 
one of the basic points is that someone who is completely materially, spiritually satisfied still he is uh, attracted by the transcendental qualities of the Lord engages in his pure unalloyed devotional service. Right. If somebody thinks that, well, we have to serve the Lord for some material reason, but this verse very conclusively establishes that even people who are completely materially transcendental or who are independent of so many material controls they willingly engage in the devotional service of the Lord out of their mature realization being attracted by his transcendental qualities this is basically a proof that devotional service is the solemn bonum of life This also proves the transcendental position of Lord Chaitanya. When Lord Chaitanya explained this Atmarama Sloka and Jagannath Puri to Sarvabhoma Bhattacharya, that's what convinced Sarvabhoma Bhattacharya that Lord Chaitanya actually was not a conditioned soul, but he was the Supreme Personality of Godhead because just nobody could have such a expansive and deep understanding of the verse. Similar situation happened when Digvijay, Keshav Kashmiri, was touring all over India. Wherever he went, he got people to sign. He defeated people. And this way, as a pundit, as a great learned scholar, and he was uh, becoming more and more prominent and famous. His secret of success was that he would worship Mother Saraswati. And this way he would get so much knowledge he could defeat others. So, when the case of Kashmiri he had set his eyes on Navadri when he wanted to go and defeat all the pundits in Navadri so that then he would be the most prominent pundit in the entire North India if not the whole India. So, Hesha Kashmiri offered his worship to Mother Saraswati as usual. And the pundits of Navadri, they were very afraid of this uh, Digvijay because he was practically indefe indefeatable, undefeatable. So, they came up to a plan of action and they actually asked Nimai Pandit to meet him. Because they thought Nimai Pandit is so young and he's such an astute Pandit that if he de de defeats him, well, so our glory will be enhanced so much that even one of our very young Pandits could defeat him. <laughs> but although Nimai Pandit was in fact the most qualified, best of all the pundits. The second thing, well, even if he were to lose, then they could possibly get another chance saying, well, he was just a boy. And by that time, they'd be able to figure out what's happening. So it was a, like a kind of a political move on their part to ask me, my pundit, to meet Keshav Kashmini. They didn't actually know the real transcendental position. So Nimai Pandit Lord Chaitanya went to the ocean, or rather to the Ganges bathing. It just happened that by 
the will of providence he met with Keshav Keshmani there outside the city so Keshav Keshmani could understand that here was uh, the person that he was actually supposed to meet so they started to discuss and the Lord Chaitanya, he took a humble position and said that I like to hear your poetry. He said, I'm just a humble student of grammar and if I can learn, you know, the poetic art from you, then uh, this will be very nice. See, then Keshav Kashmiri immediately was just by the Ganges, so he said that he gave a hundred verses glorifying the Ganges, just like you know, just composing, per, you know, Sanskrit poetry just like a machine gun, bam, 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 one after another. All of it seemed, you know, completely perfect. As would be revealed by Lord Chaitanya. That's where they belong. But hold it. Put them right. This is how they crack. You put them backwards. <clears throat> so right in the middle, Lord Chaitanya asks what the good and bad qualities of like the fifty fourth verse. This has happened to me sometimes if someone would come and say some Indian he asks for questions and he raises his hand in, in South India or well, the fifth chapter 43rd verse of the Bhagavad Gita says that, uh, that what do you have to say about that you know <laughs> I'm trying to remember what the fifth chapter, the fourth verse. You know, you know you get a hint on which that, which you know they never tell you what the verse is. They just they tell you the number, and then they uh, say some part from it. You know, <laughs> then they ask you to come and you know, say, well, <clears throat> bring out the Bhagavad Gita and let's just go over it. And then it turns out that usually they misquote. They really meant the seventh chapter, twenty-second uh, verse, you know, but which really threw you off. You know, <laughs> this happened to me when the guy kept saying, "I said, you sure you didn't know? read out the verses?" That's not the one. You know. Then he was like, you know, twenty numbers off. But here, Lord Chaitanya, you know, he just picked out one verse at the middle, which astonished because even though he was composing a hundred verses but it wasn't even that he could put them to memory himself but here Lord Chaitanya had put all of the verses immediately right to memory so he picked out anyone he could just pick out picked it out and then he quoted so what are the good and bad qualities of that immediately he got puffed up you know any good and bad qualities there's, there's bad qualities in his Composition. He says, there's no bad qualities in my composition. <clears throat> so then Lord Chaitanya proceeded to show various uh, errors in the composition. Double negatives, misuse of uh, syllables, certain grammatical and uh, metaphorical errors. Then after that he showed the good qualities, how many similes, how many metaphors, how many what they call syllabants and different other type of poetic embellishments. In this way, because the Keshe of Kashmiri had said there is no fault in his composition, and Lord Chaitanya had picked out the fault. Technically Keshe of Kashmiri was KO'd. <laughs> 
in the Pandit arena. So then, <clears throat> Keshav Kashmiri went back to where he was staying. And he was trying to, why is it that I said there was no fault in my composition? Why did Saraswati Devi let me out like, let me down like that? So he prayed to Saraswati Devi to please reveal how is it that uh, he lost to Nimai Pandit? What offense or something had he done to it? She, this way his intelligence failed him. Then that night in a dream, was it in a dream or directly? in a dream Saraswati Devi appeared to him and told him that that person who you think is Nimai Pandit you should surrender to him he's actually my husband he's my master he's my eternal master <coughs> Krishna so then this way in the next day Keshav Kashmiri he surrendered to Lord Chaitanya and then Lord Chaitanya revealed his transcendental form to Keshav Kashmiri. Keshav Kashmiri became absorbed in pure devotional service. <coughs> so human intelligence has a limit, it can always fail. It's big multinational corporations, they make the big computer programs. They put one recently was put out, then after putting it out for two weeks they have to take it back. It bugs. Not the ones that crawl us. <laughs> it had so many errors in it they didn't foresee. This is the material situation that, that our intelligence no matter how developed it is just like Hiranyakashipu he had tried to figure everything out but it never comes up to the intelligence of the Supreme Personality of Godhead because our intelligence is just a part a fraction of his intelligence so the fraction can never equal the whole it's by definition the fraction has to be less than the whole so by definition, we are he chitkona. We're just a spark, a part of Krishna. Therefore, we can never equal the whole. But if we are in surrendered to Him, if we are in complete uh, harmony with Him, then we can get that unlimited potency coming through us. But if we try to compete with Krishna, of course, we'll lose. So in this material world, people are, are trying to compete with just Krishna's external energy and they're getting defeated. And what to speak of those who want to directly compete with Krishna, their situation is very precarious. You see, so the devotees, they stop this competition business against Krishna. They stop the enjoying attitude of trying to exploit the material world for their sense gratification. And rather, they use their intelligence, their faculties, their senses, everything, for the service of the Lord. In this way, uh, the, they become Atmarama, they become completely self-satisfied. They become completely uh, near Grantha, freed from all kinds of material bondages. The Munis, the devotees, not these, not those Munis. <coughs> this is the Sanskrit Muni, Munayo. It means to be silent means that the devotee doesn't mean that he just becomes Mona Baba. The Mona Baba in India have these Mona Babas. They take a vow, they won't speak for two, three, four years, something like that. They don't speak, but then you want to talk to them, so they write. <laughs> so in this way, 
They're still thinking so many things, but they just take a vow they won't speak. It's like, you know, there are people that uh, are born that way, they can't speak until they... Uh, my airport, this one man, he can't speak, he just grunts. And if you want to say something, he has to write it down and show you. They call him Boba. Boba, deaf and dumb. What what do they call here? Mute. 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 Deaf mute. They can't speak. So to pl to be a, a Mona Baba or a deaf mute by choice, it's not a very transcendental situation. So Muni doesn't mean that kind of silence, but a devotee is Muni that he only speaks about Krishna doesn't speak nonsense, doesn't speak materialistically, neither does he just become silent like a deaf mute. But he speaks only transcendental subject matter. So, here in the Marai Seva, just reminded how there's that verse in the Bhagavatam that uh, Marari, he saves us, protects us from all kinds of dangers of life that Murari's lotus feet are the boat by which we can cross over this ocean of the material world. So, Prabhupada, he has given us the Murari Sevak in order that we can serve Murari's lotus feet and thus cross over the ocean of material world, crossing over all of the dangers which the material world holds out at every step. Samasrita je pada pallava plavam mahat padang punya yaso murare bhavang budi vacha padang 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 yavdi padang nadesham So that same point was referred to here in the purport that's why I was reminded where Krishna, well, Prabhupada said that uh, uh, that's, uh, transcendental bliss in the realization of impersonal Brahman becomes comparable to the scanty water contained in the pit made by a cow's hoof. It is nothing compared with the ocean of bliss of the vision of the personality of Godhead. So, here by becoming a sevak or a servitor of Marari, uh, then we can transcend the ocean of material birth and death, which is reduced just like it's a small scanty hoof print of water. We can transcend the boring, impersonal bliss of uh, Brahman and transcend to the... Uh, Unlimited transcendental qualities of uh, Krishna, of Marari. All by taking shelter of Marari's devotional service. Now for those who don't take shelter of the lotus feet of Marari, who instead try to take shelter of their own intelligence, of this material world, I said for them, the munis, the intelligent devotees of the Lord, they never do that because they know that padang, padang, yadri padang, that at every step, padang, padang, step by step, there's yadri padang, there's the possibility of danger. But when we take shelter of Murari, of Krishna, then we are crossed over that ocean of danger. We become, become fearless. Bajahure manna sinanda nandana aboya charanara vindare. Completely fearless in devotional service. Jai Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhunityananda Sri Adoyti Giradha Sri Vasari Gaur Bhakta Vrinda Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram, Hare Hare. Where? Enjoy Bhakti Jai.